Hello, and welcome to the Toolcrib's first in a series of free videos. Uh, this video, we're just going to be quickly exploring some contour rendering in Mental Ray. Uh, you can uh, download the scene from uh, our server, or you can use uh, any scene that you want. I'm just going to go over the scene really quickly and make sure that we basically get all on the same page. I've got a camera here. Uh, I have uh, set it to an 80 millimeter lens. Uh, there, there'll be a reason for that. That'll be in other lessons. That'll, that'll become more clear as to why we've done that. And uh, I've set my resolution to 960 540 under the render options here. I'm going to click off enable de default light. Um, you'll notice that the device aspect ratio uh, with a 16-9 with a uh, uh, setup is going to be 1.778. That needs to be reflected in your camera here under the film aspect ratio. Uh, Maya has some convenient d ways of ignoring that, but that number should always be set correctly. Uh, uh, it, sometimes it doesn't affect your render until you add in an image plane or try to do some compositing stuff, and that can come back and uh, bite you uh, pretty hard. Um, okay, so we've got that, right? Just also under Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, we want to make sure that we have Mental Ray loaded, and indeed uh, on my system it's set to load automatically. And uh, that's really about it. You obviously need to have some objects in your scene. I've got, uh, I chose three different objects for this. I've got a uh, NURBS, which will need to have a uh, approximation applied to it. So let's just open up the approximation editor here and under NURBS tessellation I'm going to sit, hit create. It's very simple. One, again, we've also got a uh, sub D vase here that uh, has not had any approximations applied to it. So just again in the editor I'm just going to click where it says to drive from Maya. I'm going to hit create. Now it should render correctly. On the cube that I've made here, it's just some a cube with some extruded faces. The only thing that I'm going to really do here right now is I am going to come up here and under, i got to be in the polygon menu rather, and under the polygon menu here under normals, I'm going to set normal angle and I'm going to set it down to zero so that they're all, uh, I mean, very hard angles. Uh, we could actually set it to 89, which basically means that any angle until you hit the breaking point of 90 would be soft shaded. So we're going to actually do that and we're just going to hit apply and close. There we go. Our normals, uh, our, our edge hardness has been set. Again, we can just come back up here, delete all by type history so we start with a clean scene. I'm going to save this as another name, just with some incremental changes there. So I hit save. I want to save it as an MA file personally. And there we go. We're ready to start. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to assign three different materials. So go into your hypershade, and we're just going to be using Lambert, Lambert's. So let's just make three of those for right now. Lambert 2. Let's make that white and apply that to the psych. Let's assign make this one red. You'll notice that I assigned it to the vase. And actually, you know what, I'm going to change this one to a fong. And again, that'll become clearer why in a second. I'm going to apply that to the vase. Okay, I think that I'm probably up here on uh, use default material. There we go. You can see my materials now. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to assign this one to Lambert 4 just by click dragging on there show you a different, few different ways of assigning uh, some surface materials in case you don't know. And I'm just going to pump that up to some kind of blue, light type of blue that I like. That's that. So let's hit save. Okay. Now you'll notice because I turned off that default light, headlight creation that Maya will sometimes do, that the first thing that we're going to do right now is we're going to add in just a directional light. Okay, You can leave it at the center. Sometimes I like to move it around just so I can kind of get a better idea of where it is. You can scale it up so we can see kind of what's going on here. And just kind of move it out of the way a little bit. Okay. So I can 
can see it a little bit better. It's kind of the angle that I want it at. It really doesn't matter where you place it, really. Okay. So let's go back. And the one thing that I also want to do for this light is I'm just going to enable some shadows. Use ray trace shadows. Let's hit the light angle to one. Yeah, that's pretty much all we need right now. Yeah, let's set those shadow rays to uh, four for now. Okay. Smooth shade all. Okay. Now let's come up here to our render options under the quality section here. I'm going to keep this low, but not quite that low because uh, I want to get some interactive renders going on here. This should go pretty quickly. We've got our indirect lighting tab. We're not getting into that at all right now. Yeah, this will work a little bit better for us, I think. Okay. The next thing I want to do So I'm just going to select this surface. I'm going to hit Control A to bring up its uh, the attribute editor for it, and under Render Stats, I'm going to turn off Double Sided, okay, and then I'm going to come back to the Surfaces menu, and I'm just going to do Edit Surfaces, Reverse Surface Direction. That way, if we move the camera outside of the box or the light, it'll pass through there, uh, and it won't uh, really affect uh, our renders. So let's come back to camera stills. Okay, let's just snap off a real quick blender. Yeah, that's looking a little bit more like what I want to get right now. I'm going to just add in, shoot a little bit of another light coming from this direction, uh, just to uh, uh, kind of soften that hardness, or what we can do, if we wanted, is just turn on a little bit of final gather. So actually, let's just do that real quick. Let's pump that down to 50 so that our quality is pretty low, because we want these runners to be going pretty fast. Okay, so here we are. We've got our render. We've got a little bit of color bleed. It's not brightening that up quite as much as I would like, so I am going to just uh, come in there and add another quick directional light. So just come here, directional light. I'm going to shoot it from this side. Okay. Pull it up just a little tiny bit. And hit Control A to go into his editor. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give this a little bit of color temperature right now just by plugging it into the blues. I'm going to set that to a real low value, like a 0.2. Okay, I'm going to come back up here, select that light, go into its attribute editor, and I'm just going to warm that up just to, again, just a real, real small amount of light in there, light color rather. Okay. The other thing that I want to do real quickly so that we always render to uh, the correct camera under uh, Common. I'm going to scroll down and under Renderable Camera, I'm just going to set it to Camera Still. There we go. Uh, I am going to turn that on because I always uh, do render out depth passes. I'm going to come back to the render and let's just snap off a real quick render and I'll be back when it's done.